You're watching Arise News Hour. Now in other news, Joe Biden has arrived in Israel, his first visit to the Middle East as US president. The president will also meet with Palestinian leaders in the occupied West Bank. He'll then travel to Saudi Arabia, where he will join a summit of leaders of the Gulf, along with those of Jordan, Egypt and Iraq. The US and Israel are holding talks on renewing a, quote, strong global coalition against Iran. We'll continue to advance Israel's integration into the region, expand emerging forums and engagement like the new I2U2 summit, which will bring Israel, the United States, the UAE together, and India as well, to deepen our economic cooperation between the Middle East and the Indo-Pacific. During your visit, we will discuss matters of national security. We will discuss building a new security and economy architecture with the nations of the Middle East, following the Abram Accords and the achievements of the Negev Summit. And we will discuss the need to renew a strong global coalition that will stop the Iranian nuclear program. Well, for more on this, Arise's Middle East analyst, Dr. Saul Zadka, joins us now. Uh, so what do you think President Biden is hoping to achieve on his trip to Israel? After the symbolic retreat from Afghanistan less than a year ago that he championed, President Biden would like to have a crowning achievement in the region in his first visit as a president to the Middle East. And what I think he would have liked to do is to form some kind of an anti-Iranian alliance, which would also be serving as a kind of an anti-Russian alliance, in the Middle East with Israel and the entire Arab world, including mostly Saudi Arabia. It could be something that is model on NATO. The European alliance against Russia in Europe would be definitely be modeled in the Middle East. And this is exactly what he's trying to achieve. If he managed to do that, he will have to advance relationship between Israel and Saudi Arabia, in which the latter will make some first steps to recognize the former. And this is exactly what he has in mind. And this could be the achievement that he was wishing for. And he's due to meet Israel's PM, Yair Lapid, for more talks on Thursday. We know Joe Biden wants the Iran nuclear deal revived. But as you outlined, both Saudi Arabia and Israel are obviously dead against this deal. Well, it's not as clear-cut as that. While Israel is strongly against any deal with Iran, or definitely this kind of a deal that has been, as you remember, advanced and settled by President Obama when Biden was the vice president, Saudi Arabia and the other Arab worlds in the Sunni camp would not necessarily oppose any kind of a nuclear deal with Iran simply because they think that not having a nuclear deal with Iran would be much worse because it will give the Iranians the freedom to continue with the nuclear program. In that sense, the Israelis and the Saudis, as well as the rest of the Sunni Arab world, would not be seeing eye to eye. And this is something that could be a bone of contention between the Americans on one hand and the Israelis on the other, while the Arabs are in the middle. And President Biden is also going to be meeting uh, Palestinian leaders. Now, they've expressed some frustration that he's not done enough for them since becoming president. He's obviously championed the two-state solution. What do you think they will be telling him? They will be telling him that unlike his predecessor, President Trump, they are looking forward to receive some assurances for the Americans that the administration is still committed to the two-state solution. And Biden is going to take tangible steps in order to help the Palestinians. First of all, he will be meeting the president of the, Europe, of the Palestinian Authority in Bethlehem on Friday, and he will be going to East Jerusalem, predominantly Arab, as the first American president who goes there outside the walls of the old city. And he will be going to a hospital very famous on the Mount of Olive called Augusta Victoria, from which he will announce a package of $100 million 
to help Palestinian hospitals in East Jerusalem and the West Bank. And he will tell also his Israeli hosts that the Abraham Accords that uh, managed to get the United Arab Emirates, Bahrain and Morocco to normalize relations with Israel is not a substitution for recognizing the Palestinians and their entitlement to independent state. And do you think the two-state solution is still a viable, viable one? Not in the eyes of most of uh, uh, the Israeli population, but President Trump will try to revive it, although he may not believe in it himself. But he's going through the motion in order to show the Palestinians that he is objective and not one-sided as, as President Trump was. And for, by doing so, he will be able to take some confidence building measures in order to calm down Palestinian fears. Now we know uh, after he travels uh, and meets with leaders in Israel, he then goes to the Gulf region. He's due to, he's gonna become the first US president to fly directly to Saudi Arabia from Israel, where he's set to meet Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman. When he was a campaigner, when he was campaigning for president, he vowed to make Saudi Arabia a pariah state. How difficult will this part of his trip be? This would be the most difficult part of his trip because President Biden will have to swallow the bitter pill in which he will have to shake a hand with the man that the CIA accused of ordering the murder and the dismembering of the body of Jamal Khashoggi in Istanbul not so long ago, because this is something that Biden, as you say, vowed not to do. But this trip is actually the outcome of what is happening elsewhere in the world, the war in Ukraine, which made Biden going to Saudi Arabia and trying to make peace with Ben Salman, despite the fact that he said definitely I'm not going to meet him, and definitely not as a head of a pariah state, in which he would ask his host to reduce the oil prices in order to destabilize the economic all over the world. Arise Middle East analyst Dr. Saul Zadka, thank you.